So Johnny, thank you very much for joining us today. Um, it's great to have you on this call uh, and uh, really looking forward to kind of um, talking to you about what you're seeing uh, in terms of the business sector and in terms of climate change. But perhaps just to kind of kick off, Johnny, tell us a little bit about um, who you are and the organization that you, uh, that you represent. Okay, well, hi, Brian. It's great to be here. This is such an interesting topic. Um, and it's a hot topic in, in weights at the moment and has been for some time. So it's, it's great to be able to share some of our experiences with you. Um, so Waits Group is part of a, a broader family enterprise. It's an entirely family owned business, UK business. Um, the Waits Group element is the dominant part of the overall enterprise, um, focused in the UK and around the built environment would be the sort of scope we would describe. It's been around for a good while. Um, I'm a fourth generation owner, generation five arising fast. Um, the oldest there is 25 already. So we're already into this sort of this transition nowadays is continuous. And right. it, it is worth noting, we're quite thoughtful about that. Our role as stewards of something, custodians of something for our generation. So there is generational thinking already built into the way the owners own the business. Um, so anyway, Waits was founded in 1897. As I say, I'm a fourth ge generation owner. I'm on the Waits Group board and have been for, for some time. I'm also chair of the board sustainability committee, which was instituted four or five years ago. The weights business within the built environment um, is sort of a portfolio business within that. It's a very big market, the UK construction market and development market. So we do private development. We do um, construction in the commercial space. We do um, a lot of social housing maintenance. We do a lot of public sector work in education and heritage buildings. So without going on endlessly, it's a, it's sort of a, a broadly based business within that built environment market. Okay, and I, give me an idea of kind of the scale of business, Johnny. How, how much is, is it, uh, is it pri it's privately owned business, isn't it? So it's not yeah, listed. Yeah, it's privately owned. Um, so revenue uh, is about 4,000 staff. We've got offices right across the UK. Um, and revenue is somewhere around one and a half billion nowadays. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Good. And then, Johnny, in terms of um, in terms of this topic of kind of climate change uh, and thinking about you, may, you mentioned that uh, you're chair of, the, of that board, sustainability board and you're a non-executive director on the on the board. Um, you know how, in terms of the critical issues that the board of weights are dealing with today. Where does the climate crisis, where does the kind of climate issues feature in terms of the level of priority, I suppose, and attention that the board is giving this topic? Mm. Well, they're right at the centre. Um, and that's partly because they're, they're part of a system which is highly dynamic. So we, we, we look at things through a system lens uh, rather than in isolation. And um, climate is related to a number of other issues that are critical to the board. So rather than isolating it out, it's it's more understanding the role that it plays. Um, and it is absolutely a dynamic factor within that system. So the it, it's it's probably worth mentioning that um, a little while back, we, we did some work with a, a third party consultant, um, which was called horizon scan work. And we, it, it as the title suggests, it's a scanning of the horizon in the broadest possible sense. The question is, what is happening out there? Um, three, four months of work, so it was quite intense. And the purpose of the exercise was to, uh, we, we had this sense that the environment beyond our borders was, was highly dynamic and there's a lot of change, societal and environmental change, technological change, legislative change, uh, geopolitical change, um, pandemic, Brexit, there's an awful lot of things going on. So the horizon scan work was very helpful in identifying the critical issues. Climate change was quite naturally a, a big facet of the overall environmental assessment. Um, and there was a, se a secondary question really around, well, so what, what does that actually mean to us? And we did some, we did some intensive work um, with help um, to try to make sense of these things that if you like, were um, beyond the conventional scope of a, of, a, of a strategic scan of the environment. Normally that would look at our markets, um, the UK context, customers, competitors. 
um, what this work did was look far beyond that. So the origin of our focus on climate change really lies in a deliberate attempt to um, try to make sense of what's happening out there to synthesize it. And most importantly of all, try to build a consensus in our organization as to what that meant to us. So right. the conclusion around climate change was that uh, within the system as a whole, it's a, it's a critical factor, absolutely critical, along with, but you couldn't look at it in isolation, for example, of technology. So if you think about our industry and the rise of offsite manufacture, part of that is being driven by the carbon agenda, but it's also being enabled by digitization and strides, forward strides being made in technology. So you can see the relatedness between those, between those two things. We also see that climate change is much more prominent in the minds of our customers. And not just our customers, but all stakeholders, but let me just talk about customers for a moment. Mm -hmm. um, when we're bidding for work through our construction business, clients are increasingly expecting carbon solutions. And there's a variety of reasons why they're expecting those carbon solutions, but they lie in that sort of analysis, that reconnaissance that we did the, through the horizon scan helps us understand that this is not a fad or a temporary thing. Our clients are increasingly going to be asking for this kind of focus, for competence and understanding for us as a contractor to help them with solutions around low carbon in the right. build process. So where we source materials from say, in the construction process, but then also in the whole life cycle of a building. It's very different conversations taking place. So I couldn't be more specific, I think, in the, the board sees climate change as an intrinsic part of what's required for a fit for purpose contractor in the, in the present day. And we see that only becoming greater as time moves forward. The fact that clients are asking for, you know, uh, contractors in bids to step up with carbon solutions, this is a huge opportunity for new value propositions. Yeah. Um, so we're excited about that. Okay. Wow. That's very clear. Thanks, Johnny. Um, so in terms of, um, I mean, you, you, you talked about kind of, you know, customers, you talked about the board, um, you mentioned other stakeholders as well. So, you know, what we are learning is that a huge amount of money is moving into ESG, um, you know, green bonds being raised everywhere. Um, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of noise and a lot of tension. It's, it, you know, it's a real sense that the investment community, you know, pension funds, um, you know, institutional investors are really now um, kind of raising the bar what their expectations are. Uh, are you seeing a kind of a pattern there as well? Mm, for sure. I mean, they do say follow the money. And if you do follow the money, it it's striking this change, especially in the last 18 right. months, I think. Conversations okay. within the financial community, there's a, there's a lot more awareness of, and I think it's coming, it's coming because there is a far greater understanding of the opportunity and risk, particularly the risk dimension of the environmental agenda. And it, it isn't just climate change, it is the broader environmental agenda to do with biodiversity loss, to do with waste. Yeah. Um, and beyond that, of course, about societal justice is a, a very strong societal justice agenda at the moment. So we're, we're responding to that. And I think it's important to recognize that climate change and our interest in climate change, our focus on climate change sits within a very dynamic, broader suite of areas that we think are, are important. But to your point, yes, we are, we are seeing some very big changes. And I think that's driving behaviors, um, in particular in, for example, in PLC clients, their institutional investors are very interested in their climate change performance and the, the, the understanding businesses have of the risk and opportunity associated with climate change and with the environmental agenda. Yeah, yeah, very true. I think it was announced last week, uh, the government um, were talking about, you know, for any, any kind of bids over 5 million for public works, there's going to be a much stronger focus on zero carbon. Mm. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. certainly, certainly to them, the... I think the mood music coming out of government, we've got COP fast approaching, so there is a great deal more scrutiny. And uh, I think there's a degree of surprise, but I'm, I personally welcome it as a citizen, because I do think climate change is, you know, it's real and we do need to respond. So there is that sort of sense of, I've sort of talked through the business lens, but really as a citizen, as a, as a human being, I recognize, I recognize the challenge and, and feel a responsibility to, 
my fellow citizens, but also to generations to follow. So that, that yeah, I haven't talked about the, the, let's call it the moral or ethical aspects no. of this. That, that, that is a, it's unambiguous in our organization that we have, we going back to the board that we, we, we have to take responsibility. We have to provide right. leadership. We have to take care of things beyond our own immediate self-interest in this situation. So yeah. I, I, it is quite important to understand that that, that that plays out quite strongly in our board. It's not just about commercial interest. It's right. also, you know, we have a collective challenge here, which we all need to rise to. Yeah. And we, we play our part. It's part of being a, a business that's fit for purpose, actually. And we're, we, we do try to be purposeful. Fantastic. I'm very pleased to be living in a weights home. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Hey, Johnny, our final, my final question really is, um, uh, you know, there'll be business leaders from the property industry and indeed other industries uh, listening to this, to this uh, interview. Um, what do you think, you know, what, what, what advice would you give to them in terms of this issue, these, these issues we've been talking about? What things would you, would you, would you say to them? Or maybe I'd start where I just finished off with the last question, which is, how do you really feel about this as an individual? And um, given what you know, what actions do you think are appropriate? If you look at, imagine looking future generations in the eye, whether it's your own children or their children, we are, we are creating a big challenge for them. Um, I'm personally clear about that, and it does provide me with with motivation. So I, I do think there's that thing about don't don't leave your your human self at the door when you come to work and suddenly mm. put on a sort of suit which encourages you to think differently. I do think we need to take ownership at that level. Um, but I don't really want to moralize about that. It's just it, that's just how I feel. And um, yeah. I would really encourage people to to check in with that. And and if you don't fully understand the issues to just to spend some time, you know, getting up to speed with with what's really going on. At a, at a human level and then um, bring that to work because as I've, I've given a couple of simple examples but they are quite powerful in our operating context these examples you know we are we are I think it's fair to say that weights is we might have good intentions and we set some we've set some very public and challenging targets around um, around carbon around waste and around nature um, so that's all good. That's the intention. But the reality is it's quite difficult. It, it, we're having to scramble and change, we're having to react to clients requiring different things. Um, society's expectations of organisations of, of business is, is changing also. So all of this we've noticed, but we've been paying attention. So perhaps the next piece of advice would be to, to I think it's really important to pay attention to this area. Um, there's a, a lot to see there, a lot, a lot to learn. And I am in regularly in conversations with people in our industry who are in the same position where they sort of they're co they're cottoning onto this, uh, whether it's through bid requirements or or other specific things, um, and not sure how to respond. Many many organisations have declared climate emergencies, but they they've now got a backfill around that. So they they sort of the pennies dropped, but now what? The, the hard bit, and that this is the bit that Waits is currently going through is. How do we how do we organize ourselves to respond to the risks and opportunities that arise from climate change? Right. Um, that, that is quite hard work. The, the good news is there's lots of people out there that can help. Um, there's a burgeoning um, sustainability consultancy community um, and some very good practitioners. Um, so that could that can help as well. So I, I, I think also to be um, as one should really around risk and opportunity to be systematic. So we did that work on the horizon scan. And I think without that, it would have been very difficult to build the consensus that we now have around our board table, around our senior leadership team, um, that this is a material issue that needs to be addressed very seriously indeed. So there is a great deal of attention being paid to it. And it's not to say that, you know, we're, we're home and hosed, far from it. You know, I said, we're scrambling and, and it does feel like that. And this is deep organizational change that's taking place really in order to equip the organization to deal with the challenges that are thrown up uh, by the situation that we find ourselves in. So I think being systematic is around reconnaissance first um, and giving people a chance in the organization if they're not already there around you to 
to build that common understanding of what's happening. Right. If, if people disagree about what's happening, it's very difficult to build momentum. Okay. Unless you've got come up, some some organisations, excuse the sort of the cliched language, but it's more command control. In which case, you can just do what you want. But it, the way it's organisation isn't really like that. We're quite consensus driven in our right. decision making style and things. So um, it really was important, and it requires a lot of patience to to build. Some people saw this before others did. Um, other people didn't feel comfortable with it, um, didn't get it, and it, it did take a long time, several loops really, to get everybody. Um, to the same place and the investment of time and effort um, in that third party horizons run horizon scan was very important so i, I do right. think not to rush the fences to build understanding to build consensus and then be as clear as possible about the question of materiality what, what does it really mean to you in your specific context so i can talk about weights but the built environment area is huge and different organizations have different um different contexts they're doing mm. different things very often so, you know, I don't think it's one size fits all, but doing that yeah. preparation work, it does help. It does help build consensus and build commitment. I think that commitment is very important. Yeah. Fantastic. Great. Johnny, thank you so much. It's been fantastic spending this time with you. And thanks very much for sharing with us so much about you know, your vision and what the Waits Group are doing. Well, thanks, Brian. Pleasure.